Dolphins Today is sponsored by Kinzuri. If you go to Kinzuri.com slash chat and use promo code chat, you're going to get 15% off on their height-boosting shoes. We'll tell you more about those shoes later on in today's show. Dolphins fans, I am Will Scott. Welcome in to Dolphins Today. The Dolphins have been busy making some signings as of late. So on today's show, I'm going to break down an updated list of free agent targets. Here are the signings that the Dolphins have made in the last week. It started last Wednesday with Tyler Croft, the tight end, formerly with the San Francisco 49ers, joining the Dolphins. And then Isaiah Wynn, who is a name that we talked a lot about on the show. In fact, in our last free agent targets video, he came in at number four. So the Dolphins signed him over the weekend. And then Cedric Obwehi, you signed him on Monday, the offensive tackle formerly with the New York Jets, the former first-round pick by the Bengals in 2015. And then Bryce Thompson, the cornerback. Uh, that signing is expected to be made official uh, sometime this week. He played for the XFL Seattle Sea Dragons, where he was one of the best defenders in the XFL this year. Who do you want the Dolphins to sign next? Four signings in the last week. Who do you want the Dolphins to sign next? And I'll say this, uh, on June 1st, which is two weeks from today, the Dolphins are going to get nearly $14 million in cap space when the Byron Jones post-June 1 cut designation goes through. So uh, they could be even busier when June 1st comes around. Chime in down below. Who should the Dolphins sign next? Uh, we begin with number 10 here on our top 10 list. It is Matt uh, Eondis, the defensive tackle from the Carolina Panthers. And I do believe the Dolphins should sign a defensive tackle here in the coming weeks because you look at this room right now. Josiah Bronson's on a futures deal. You got Raekwon Davis. He's a free agent after this next year. And then Brandon Peely, uh, he is a UDFA. So the Dolphins do not have a lot of depth at this position. Miami has got to sign a defensive tackle, and I do expect them to do that when they get that money on June 1. I fully expect that to be the first position uh, that, they, that, that they prioritize uh, when they get that Byron Jones cash. Quan Alexander coming in at number nine, the linebacker that played last season with the New York Jets, formerly uh, with the New Orleans Saints as well. I've been following Kwan for a long time. He played at LSU, so I've been uh, watching this guy play for a long time as an LSU fan and really like what Alexander brings to the table. He's consistent, hard-hitting linebacker, pretty good in coverage as well. So I'm not sure if the Dolphins are going to sign a linebacker, but if they do, I expect Kwan Alexander to be at or near the top of their list. Coming at number eight. I know the Dolphins have signed two offensive tackles here in the last week, but I still would love for them to give DJ Fluker a shot. Friend of the show, we had him on here a few weeks ago. Now, he has not played in an NFL game since 2020. He's attempting a comeback. He looked great Alabama's pro day. He's gotten himself back into game shape. Signed with the Dolphins in the 2021 offseason, so there's some familiarity there. Uh, but he was released after tearing his meniscus, and he has yet to play in the NFL since. I hope he gets a shot. I don't expect it to be the Dolphins at this point just because they've signed some offensive tackles in the last couple weeks, not to mention uh, they signed, I should say, drafted Ryan Hayes in the seventh round. So I don't know if Fluker is going to be a Dolphin, uh, but I would love for him to get a shot in the National Football League, and I promise you, after talking with him especially, uh, I'm going to be rooting for him, and I'm sure uh, you all feel the same way about DJ Fluker. I believe he deserves a shot in the National Football League again. Want to shout out today, show sponsor, Kinzuri. Fellas, are you tired of feeling insecure about your height? Kinzuri makes shoes that can add up to 2.8 inches, inches to your height discreetly. Women get heels, makeup, push-up bras. Why can't men get a confidence boost as well? We're all the same height lying down anyway, if you know what I mean. Kinzuri shoes are not only height boosting, but also stylish and comfortable. They're not grandpa's Velcro shoes, but fashionable shoes that can receive compliments even without the height increase. The height insoles are integrated into the shoes, making it the ultimate height hack. For a limited time, Kinzuri is offering our viewers an exclusive discount of 15% off, on top of their up to 30% site-wide discount. 
Use code chat at Kinsuri.com slash chat to get your 45% off. Don't wait any longer. Upgrade your shoe game in confidence now at Kinsuri.com slash chat. When I want to get high, I put on a pair of Kinsuri's. The link is in the comments and the description of today's show. Again, Kinsuri.com slash chat, promo code chat to get up to 45% off. It certainly helped my confidence. I'm five foot nine. Kinsuri's helped me out getting up to six feet tall. Moving on to number seven on our list, it is A.J. Can, the guard, formerly with the Houston Texans. I like him. Uh, I don't know if I like him a lot, but I like him more than, let's say, Liam Eikenberg. Taking a look at the PFF grades from last season in Houston, a 66.6 overall grade. Pass blocking grades, a 64.8. Run blocking grade, a 63.9. Uh, he's an upgrade over Liam Eikenberg. There's no question about that. Now, is he a really good guard? I don't know if I'd say really good. I think he's solid. Uh, but when you look at Liam Eikenberg's numbers from this past year, he was in the 40s when you're talking about his PFF grade. Right now, he is slated to be your starting left guard this season, which I'm not thrilled about. You've certainly upgraded right tackle, I think, bringing in Isaiah Wynn. I'm hoping that they upgrade at left guard before this season begins. Now, be sure to subscribe if you want daily Miami Dolphins news and rumors. Even in the offseason, even after the draft, we bring you daily Miami Dolphins coverage. So be sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, we go live every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern. So be sure to join us tomorrow for our live show. Zach Cunningham is number six on my list. The linebacker from the Tennessee Titans had a good season with Tennessee. uh, Had some injuries. Was really good with the Houston Texans before he was traded. Uh, But if you're talking about a linebacker, I like Alexander. I also like Zach Cunningham, who comes in at number six on my list. I don't think linebacker is the biggest hole at this point. It was certainly a big need coming into this offseason. But what do you think the big hole is right now on this Dolphins team? I would say either left guard or defensive tackle. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. What is the biggest hole on the Dolphins right now? Kyle Van Noy is a name that we talked about Last offseason, he comes in at number five, his first appearance on our free agent targets for this offseason. And I like Van Noy as a player. 46 tackles, nine quarterback hits in L.A. with the Chargers, eight tackles for loss, three passes defended. What impresses me about Van Noy is he's durable. He's going to be 32 years old this upcoming season. He hasn't missed much time the last couple of years. That includes a couple years ago in Miami. He was a solid player for us. I would not mind bringing him back, adding some depth at the edge rusher position. You're already pretty solid there, but Van Noy's getting to a point where he's probably going to have to take a cheap team-friendly deal, and the Dolphins have a lot of money coming their way on June 1. Akeem Hicks, kind of the same way. You know, he's aging, uh, but he remains durable, and he remains a productive player. He would be a great backup defensive tackle option behind Raekwon Davis, especially with that experience. Uh, that he brings to the table. He comes in at number four here on my list. And then Trey Turner. I mentioned Van Noy being a familiar name. So is Turner. He played with the Dolphins in 2020. The numbers with the Commanders this year weren't great, but still an upgrade, I think, over Liam Eikenberg. And again, that familiarity uh, you have with him might bring him to Miami. We'll see. Number two is Shelby Harris, the defensive lineman From the Seattle Seahawks, I really like the idea of signing Shelby Harris. I don't think he's going to be super cheap, but again, that June 1 money could help you bring in a guy like Harris, who had a good season in Seattle, a 73.2 PFF grade, two sacks, six quarterback hits, 44 tackles for Harris in Seattle. Do you want to sign Shelby Harris? Type S for sign or type P for pass down in the comments section. He comes in at number two on my list. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Number one on my list is Dalton Reisner. So Cameron Fleming, he was number one before they signed Wynn, but now they brought in Wynn. Uh, Cam Fleming is not going to be signed, so he's replaced for the top spot by his former Broncos teammate, Dalton Reisner. Taking a look at the numbers from this past year, he certainly brings in a lot of experience. Uh, This was far from his best season. But at the same time, I look at that pass block grade, 72.6. I want to bring in a guard uh, that you can trust to protect to a tongue of Iloa. This offensive line, all of a sudden, 
is really solid if you bring in Dalton Reisner. It'd be Teron Armstead, Dalton Reisner, Connor Williams, Robert Hunt, Isaiah Wynn. I think we'd be all happy with that starting five on the offensive line, certainly a lot better than it was at the start of this offseason. And it's obviously crucial that Tua Tungavailoa has a lot of protection this year. And if he does, the Dolphins can go all the, all the way. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash Dolphins News. Looking forward to seeing y'all during our live show tomorrow.